In time now 744. This can be tempting to hand our kids, nephew, nieces a tablet or turn on their favorite television show. But how does this affect their brains and overall development? Well, joining us today is Dr. Kara Goodwin, a child psychologist and expert on Instagram called the Parent Translator. Hi there. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, first off, the question everyone wants to know, is screen time okay for kids? Yes, so it really depends on the content of the screen time, meaning what they're watching, um, the age of the child, and what screen time is replacing. So parents want to try to focus on higher quality um, programming. So this is um, shows that have any sort of educational content or teach social emotional skills and that are aimed at children um, that are your child's age. Um, you also want to think about avoiding screen time for children under two because we know that their brains just aren't quite ready to apply what they learn from screens to the real world. And then for children older than two, you really want to think about um, the idea that they can learn from screens, but they will always learn better from real life interactions. Thinking about what is a screen time replacing? You know, is it replacing a potential quality interaction with you? Is it replacing the chance for them to do homework? Um, so think about kind of what what is screen time replacing in their day? And is that something they would be learning more from? What is excessive screen time and how much is really too much screen time, doctor? Yes, yeah, so the American Academy of Pediatrics um, defines excessive screen time as more than three hours. Um, so like I mentioned, you know, that level of screen time will um, be end up when it is more than three hours a day, it will replace things that are important for your child, such as sleep, um, quality time with family, homework, um, you know, having physical activity. So really making sure that you are using this in moderation so it isn't replacing other important functions in their lives. So what's your advice to parents to manage meltdowns and other negative side effects of screen time? Yes, yeah, so this is such a tough aspect of screen time because it does lead to meltdowns and whining. Um, so parents can try to <laughs> avoid meltdowns. I mean, as we all of us parents know, um, parents can try to avoid meltdowns by making it a part of your routine. So rather just putting a, a screen time on randomly every day in response to your child's whining, think about a specific time of the day when you and your child really need it. You know, maybe it's when you're making dinner, maybe it's when the baby is napping, so you can have, you know, some break during the day, but think about that time and have that be part of the routine so your child knows when to expect it and they know that whining or melting down about it is not going to result in them getting more screen time. Um, if your child does have a meltdown, about screen time or when screen time is over, try to stay calm and really stick to your limits. Um, and finally, it's important to try to avoid using screen time as a way to calm your child down when they are having a meltdown or a tantrum over something. Um, it's really important for children to learn effective coping strategies um, and to um, learn how to really regulate their emotions on their own rather than simply just being distracted by a screen. Um, and also when you do give them a screen, in those moments of heightened emotions, when you do eventually have to take it away, it'll likely just increase their negative emotions when it is time to turn off the screen. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Goodwin, for joining us. And for the folks at home, we have more information about all of these tips and a link to the Parent Translator at our website, wsls.com. Justin?